So section 1.3, solving linear equations. Again, throughout the section you will see a bunch of highlighted terms. All of those terms are vocabulary terms, terms that you'll need to understand because they'll be used throughout lectures in class as well as in directions to homework and in directions on quizzes and tests. Um, at the top of the slide here, transformations that produce equivalent equations. These are the four basic transformations that are used in solving linear equations. Uh, addition property of equality simply means that you can add the same quantity to both sides of an equation and produce an equivalent equation. Subtraction property of equality, I can subtract the same value from both sides of an equation. Multiplication property of equality, I can multiply both sides of an equation by the same non-zero real number. And division property of equality, I can divide both sides of an equation by the same non-zero real number. So for example, the original equation 2 ninths x plus 8 equals 16. If I subtract 8 from both sides of the equation, I get to the second line. And now to solve for x, I currently have 2 ninths x. What I want is 1x. So if I multiply the 2 ninths times 9 halves, the reciprocal, that will produce 1x. But if I multiply the left-hand side of the equation by 9 halves, I have to multiply the right-hand side of the equation by 9 halves. And 9 halves times 8 yields 36, the solution to the equation. So on page 22, we have paused this presentation and try number 19. So on number 19, negative 4 sevenths x is equal to 6. To solve for x, I want the value 1x. If I multiply negative 4 sevenths times its reciprocal, negative 7 fourths, that will yield 1x on the left-hand side of the equation. Multiplying the left-hand side of the equation neg by negative 7 fourths requires that I multiply the right-hand side of the equation also by negative 7 fourths. Negative 7 fourths times 6 yields negative 21 halves. Another example, in this case, the first step, I subtracted 4n from both sides. To get to the third line, I added 3 to both sides. And then finally, to solve for n, I divided both sides by 8. Now, in this example, I decided to subtract the 4n from both sides first and add 3 to both sides second. That order is not critical. I could have added 3 to both sides first and then subtracted 4n from both sides next. I would still yield, as my final result, the n value of 3. On page 22, if you try number 26, pause this presentation and try number 26. So for number 26, um, m minus 30 is equal to 6 minus 2m. In the first step, I added 2m to both sides. Then I divided both sides by 3 and yielded the correct solution, m equals 12. If I want to check that value, I always check back in the original equation. So I substitute 12 in for m in the original equation. And I get the same value on the left-hand and right-hand sides. So in this example, in order to solve for x, I'm going to need to distribute first and then combine like terms and solve for x. So I distribute the 5 on the left-hand side, distribute the negative 4 on the right-hand side, brings me to the second line, then I combine some like terms. I've combined the negative 8x and the positive x to get negative 7x, and then I've added 7x to both sides to produce 12x on the left-hand side add 10 to both sides to produce negative 18 on the right-hand side. Then to solve for x, I've divided both sides by 12, reduce the fraction to get the solution to the equation negative 3 halves. So on page 22, you try number 30. Pause this presentation and try number 30. So here you can see again, in order to solve for x, I need to distribute the 4 on the left-hand side, the negative 10 on the right-hand side. That brings me to the second line. Then I start combining like terms. Negative 10x and negative 14x is negative 24x. And then I add 24x to both sides to produce 12x on the left-hand side. 
Subtract 4 from both sides to produce 36 on the right-hand side. Divide both sides by 12 to get the solution to the equation x equals 3. And again, if I check that value, I want to always want to check back in the original equation. So I substitute 3 in for x in the original equation to check to see that the left-hand side and right-hand sides of the equation are the same. In this example, I have an equation where I uh, have fractions. And one way to solve that would be to try to combine the fractions uh, with a least common denominator. A simpler way to solve an equation where you have fractions is to identify the least common denominator of all those fractions. And then I'm going to use that least common denominator to produce an equivalent equation that does not have fractions. So in other words, my original equation here is 2 thirds x plus 1 fifth is equal to 2 x minus 3 tenths. I've used the least common denominator. The least common denominator of these three denominators, 3, 5, and 10, is 30. And I've used that denominator to produce an equivalent equation. This equation 20x plus 6 equals 60x minus 9 is equivalent to the original equation. But you can see it has no fractions. It'll be easier to solve. And the way I produce this equivalent equation is once I identified the least common denominator of 30, I multiplied through both sides of the equation by that least common denominator. So 30 times 2 thirds is 20. 30 times 1 fifth is 6. 30 times 2 is 60. 30 times negative 3 tenths is negative 9. Now I have an equivalent equation, equivalent to the original, but no fractions. And I can solve that as we have been all along, subtracting well, in this case, adding 9 to both sides to produce 15 here on the left-hand side, subtracting 20x from both sides, dividing both sides by 40, and simplifying the fraction. So on page 23, you can try number 34. Pause this presentation and try number 34. So for number 34, again, I have a, an equation which involves several fractions. Probably the easiest way to solve that equation is to produce an equivalent equation that has no fractions. So the way I do that is to identify the least common denominator of all four of these fractions. That least common denominator is 12. If I multiply both sides of the equation by 12, I produce this equivalent equation with no fractions. And then I can simplify, combine like terms, and solve for x. In this case, the value, the solution to the equation is 77 twelfths. And to check that solution, I would substitute 77 twelfths in for x in the original equation. Finally, this is an application of a word problem using some of these concepts. So in this example, I have a car salesperson's base salary is given to me as $21,000. In addition to that $21,000, she earns 5% of the value of the cars that she sells. And the question is, how much must she sell to earn $65,000 total? So I'm going to set up an equation. On the left-hand side, I have her total earnings, $65,000. And that her total earnings are going to equal her base salary of $21,000 plus 5% or 0.05 as a decimal of her sales. If I take that equation now and solve for x, I get the amount or the value of the cars that she must sell in order to earn that $65,000. So on page 23, you can try number 47. Pause this presentation and try number 47. And here you can see right-hand side, total value, left-hand side, base, plus percentage of x. Solve for x, $635,000.